Mr. White. How are you? Mrs. Angel, I am spectacular. How are you? Oh, my goodness. Welcome, everyone, to Teachers Change Lives podcast. We have a very special guest with us today. We have Principal Michael McGrone here joining us. Hello, Principal McGrone. How are you? I'm doing absolutely awesome. Good morning to my Australian family. It's ooh, 9 o'clock there and it's 6 o'clock here, so good morning. Get up. Yeah, so I'm okay. Good morning. So good That's to have right. you on board, and we're very excited to tell your absolutely fascinating story of, uh, of, of your life and how you have come to be impacting students' lives um, all the way across, across the seas um, over in America. So we are going to get straight into this story because we don't want to waste a minute. So let me introduce you um, to the alumni of uh, Mr. Principal McGrone. So he went to Jefferson Elementary School for his primary school education. In, um, in middle school, he went to Beckman Junior High and then went on to Emerson School for Visual and Performing Arts for his high school experience. He then went and got his bachelor's degree from Northeastern Illinois University and then has a master's uh, and he received that from Governor's State University. Very mm. learned man that we have with us. Uh, Mr. White, can you tell us a bit more about um, Principal McGrone's uh, sure. Principal life? Principal McGrone is a native of Gary, Indiana and has 17 brothers and sisters. Michael experienced numerous challenges throughout his life in a city ravaged by drugs and gangs he lost numerous friends to gun violence and incarceration. Physically abused, graduating with a 1.2 GPA and homeless in his first year of college, Michael pushed his pain to greatness. The struggles he encountered throughout his life gave him the tools necessary to propel students to greatness. He created several mentoring programs that would change students' lives forever. In 2015, Michael was nominated Teacher of the Year by Jesse Jackson Operation Push, and in 2018 received the prestigious Chicago Unsung Hero Award. Principal McGrone has been the guest on numerous talk shows and sought after to speak at venues across the country because of his trauma-informed approach to education. From 2015 to 18, he was a principal at Rich South High School where he gained national attention because of his innovative strategies to turn the school around. Currently, he's the principal at IYC Chicago All Boys Prison, where he continues to restore hope, rebuild dreams, and save lives. In conclusion, he's the best-selling author of a book entitled The Twists and Turns of Possibility, My Life is My True Story, where he details his journey to becoming an educator known throughout the country. It is an honor to have you on, Principal McGrone. Thank you very much for joining us. Oh, yeah, what wow. a story. So much to unpack there. So 17 brothers and sisters. Where yeah. do you fall in, in those 17? Excellent question. Uh, I fall like, like, like dead in the center. Uh, I'm also a twin. I have a twin sister, and we were born on our mother's birthday. Hey, mother's wow. Birthday. Wow. That so is. That means, that it just means that I'm special. <laughs> Absolutely, it does. I could, I could tell from as a middle child myself. I could tell that you were definitely a middle child because okay. you've got that. You do have that special aura about you. You've had to fight for your attention, yeah. like, for attention in this world. Middle children, and then there's the middle of seventeen <laughs> children. That's incredible. Exactly, you're right. That's a whole new, yeah. a whole new middle. So, um, so let's kick things off straight away. I would love to hear from you. Uh, obviously, this podcast is all about um, knowing the impact that a great teacher can have. And so can you tell us who, who is a teacher who in your life who had that um, significant positive impact on you? Yeah, uh, this teacher's name, I wrote about her in my book. Her name is uh, Dr. Fisher. Uh, I was in the fifth grade at the time, and she really made me feel loved. Uh, she, was a, she was the one who really... Um, really just really increased my enthusiasm as far as reading, wanting to be a reader. Uh, and she would always call on me to read. And she would, you know, compliment me on how I would read. And I, she helped me be able to read, understand context clues and read with enthusiasm. And when you read, ask yourself questions. And so it was, I was, it was when I was really going through a difficult time that she just made me feel special. And I thought it was just me. Found out years later that she made everybody feel yeah. special. I thought it was just me. <laughs> but Dr. Fisher uh, is the one, she's one of the reasons why I wanted to uh, uh, pursue education because she's really uh, uh, changed the trajectory of my life. 
Wow. That's beautiful. And so, so what was, um, can you, we, we like to kind of, we love to name and fame. So I love it that you've, you've written a book and, and you've, you've name and famed, um, uh, Dr. Fisher. So what, what, can you talk about some specific actions that she took that made, uh, that, that led to you feeling that particular way? Yeah, it's the way, you know, she had a, she was very keen to, she, there's a big thing. I don't know if it's going on in Australia. I don't know what my, you know, with social emotional learning, trauma informed. Uh, I grew up pretty unique. Uh, she would bring treats to school. A lot of times I was hungry and she would bring treats to school. She knew that I, you know, I really uh, didn't have uh, as much to eat. So she made sure I had like, uh, she brought snacks to school. Uh, she spent, she would, uh, uh, she would allow me to stay after school to clean the whiteboard. But during that time, you know, she would water my soul mm-hmm. and just kind of, uh, uh, really helped me with my self-esteem. Um, she would tell me how smart I was. And she told me so much, I actually started believing that I was smart. Because she said, Mike, you're so smart and you're so, you know, uh, you're so attentive. You know, I like the way you read. And, you know, she did just just a whole lot. And to this day, I still have a relationship with her. I still talk to her oh, to sure. this day. You know, uh, and so I've never forgot about her. And she's uh, she's a Facebook friend. And believe it or not, she's still involved in education. And if she wants me to come back home to be the principal of a school that she, you know, she does a lot. And so for me to do it, I told her anything that she wants me to do, I'm all there. I'm there. Oh. But she's still in education. Awesome. She must be so proud of you. Yeah. There is. And, and you're right. There's great teachers uh, make lots of students feel mm. feel that way. But that student feels like the, the, the spotlight is on them and the sun is shining on them when that teacher is giving them um, them attention, yes. but, uh, and, but then also as a great teacher, as you would know, um, we live through our student success as well. We are, they are our children. We, we feel Absolutely. so proud about all of their, their Absolutely. outcomes. We feel like we know that we've contributed to that. So she must be so proud of you. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, uh, like I said, I've done, she has a podcast as well. And, uh, you know, she wanted me to uh, share my story, my journey. And I think I, it was maybe a couple months ago. And I just talked about her and how, you know, beautiful she was. And I, you know, a lot of times they say you may forget what somebody taught you, but you never forget how they mm. made you feel. And I just remember she, I never forgot how she made me feel. And to this day, when I talked to her, she was always warm. She was always a good listener. Uh, she never judged me and she validated my soul. And uh, because of that, every time I help somebody, I tell her when I help somebody. It's because I'm throwing back the rope. What you gave to me, I'm just simply throwing it back. Oh, cool. That's yeah. beautiful. Yeah. So good. So tell us a bit about your um, – so obviously from your, your bio before, you had a very difficult upbringing mm-hmm. and um, and you've really kind of channeled that to, to turn it into to greatness, which isn't, um, isn't everybody's narrative, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. So – Obviously, Doctor, um, your 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 teacher made a big difference there. So, at what stage was there a crossroad for you, or there would have been many crossroads along the way, for you to enter university? And you said that your GPA was wasn't great um, at school, but then you massively turned that around. So, can you talk to us about some of the things that have happened that really allowed you to turn that around? That's a great question. I get posed it a lot too. Uh, my, that that moment for me came in August of 1990. Uh, you know, because we had such a big family, my mother couldn't afford the health care and things that most you know people can have that they get. And so I never had it glasses. I couldn't see. My mother couldn't even afford that because there were so many of us. So I remember being home. I graduated a 1.2 GPA. That's like a really low D because I couldn't. We was uh, we were going through things at home, and so I really was never I, because of us. My environment was unstable. I wasn't able to really apply myself to be the student that I could be. Um, but my life, that life changing moment, came for me in 1990. I knew that there was something better, uh, and I had great people, men, to come into my life. Um, Abraham Redcraw, uh, Daryl Turner. Michael Shields, uh, Dick Andre, um, and Vincent Mutes. These are five individuals who came to my life at a critical time to give me the the the, the, the what I needed to be my best self. My cousin Daryl bought me my first pair of glasses in 1990. 
I literally saw the world for the <laughs> first time in 1990. My cousin, my uncle, my uncle uh, Abraham Radcraw, he uh, got me exposed to college. My cousin Vincent drove me back, drove me to college. Michael Shields became my mentor. He was a financial financial aid director when I went to Triton because I actually got so much stuff I forgot. I actually got my associate degree from Triton College. And so Dick Andre, who's a, a, a older white gentleman, when I because I went to school, I was homeless. I didn't have a place to live. But God sent an God sent his angel and by the name of Dick Andre. He was an older white gentleman. Um, that told me I could stay with him rent free. All I needed was to graduate. And I can tell you it brings tears to my eyes. And so the only way to repay him, I call him every year for the past 20 some odd years to tell him thank you. He says, Michael, it's been 10 years. <laughs> Michael, it's been 20 years. I said, I'm going to tell you for the rest of my life. Uh, he's the reason I'm getting married in October, October 15th. Guess who's my best man? Oh, wow. Dick oh, Andre. That's yeah. Beautiful. He's 86 right now. Uh, he's in a wheelchair, but I say I'm not getting married. I'm not getting married if you don't, if you're not next to my side, because he literally changed the trajectory. He gave me stability. He loved me. He was, he allowed me to stay rent free in his home. He fed me. He gave me clothing because I didn't have any of that, and I and I'm indebted mm -hmm. to him, you know, and to all those mentors. But Dick Andre, he's my second father. I just say he's a lot more light skinned than I am. I'm a little darker. So he's like my he's like my my second dad. Oh, fantastic! That's it's beautiful. great gratitude to to hold on as well. Um, there was a phrase that you had in your bio that really grabbed me, um, where you said you talk about pushing pain to greatness. Is gratitude yes. gratitude part of that? I'd imagine. Absolutely, absolutely, brother. White. It's, it's definitely. Uh, I'm grateful. I'm I'm grateful for uh, God's divine intervention in my life. Uh, uh, a lot of people are, I'm grateful for my struggles. Uh, not, not cause most people, you know, they're great. You know, they just, man, I'm, you know, I'm happy for all these good things that happened to me, but those struggles prepare you for those great, for greatness as well. So I get an opportunity to share my story. Uh, and my story helps me take care of my family. So I would do it for free, but I actually make money sharing my story. So I tell people that especially young people that I work with in prison, trust the process. Just trust the process. You know, uh, God don't play checkers. He plays chess. Everything is strategic because when I look at my life and I look at how far I've come, oh, man, I'm so grateful. Mm -hmm. I'm grateful for the good and the bad because it shaped me, shaped who I mm -hmm. am today. I can imagine that um, particularly, well, it's actually not particularly, working in schools um, and with kids, we there's just such a, a wide variety of, of kids there to um, for us to be able to work with and, and in prison, it would be exactly the same, actually. Yes. Um, just, just they've, they've had some other circumstances that have led them there, but I, I'm certain that, um, the experiences that you've had have really allowed you to connect deeper with, um, such a broad range of students. You sound like an educator. You know about connection. You sound... <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. It is that my experience is. Uh, really gives me the tools that I need to really be able to communicate them with, in a way that they can see light at the end of the tunnel, you know? Yeah. And so uh, uh, speaking of that, we had in prison, we know if we can graduate young, young uh, men in prison, the chances are that, uh, that we can definitely uh, reduce the recidivism rate with them going, uh, going back to prison. So I'm proud to say this month we graduated four, four of our students. Uh, that they got a second chance at life. And, I, and I'm just like elated. One of our young men graduated today. And so we're going to have a graduation ceremony at the end of this month. And I'm fired up. I'm fired up because those are lives that they have a potential to change uh, as a result. I say they made a mistake, but they're not a mistake. So we have to make sure to provide. Yeah, right. I love that. How I love that. You made a mistake, but you're not a mistake. That's so yeah. good. And I just got um, yeah, full body um, goosebumps yeah. just and then. Principal yeah. McGrone, that's so and so right that um, literate and numerate, um, the stats on, on literacy and numeracy, um, highly literate and numerate people are much less likely to to go to jail. They're much more likely to have a, a longer 
healthier life and um, so everything that we can do in schools mm. to help students to graduate being literate and numerate is it's everything it's it's literally life-changing for them yeah, well, how hard is it uh, to get these people who are who find themselves in prison for as you say something they've done not for themselves um, how hard is it to get them to trust the process in order to buy in and and follow you um, uh, our role model. I, I use my life yeah, as an good. example. Um, I, I don't mind sharing my story. Uh, I let them know I wasn't always this happy-go-lucky guy. You know, I let them know that I had a mother who dealt with mental health issues. I had a father that that struggled with alcoholism, and there was some abuse as a result of that. Uh, I didn't do well in school, so I let them know if I can do it, surely you can do it. And that, you know, many of us we have a lot of people that close a chapter. A lot of my students, I say, you may you, you have a book coming and your book may you may have 160 chapters, chapters in your book. But some folks are closing the book at chapter four. They're mm-hmm. forgetting that you got other chapters. Just like myself, if you would have stopped with me at 18 or 17, you would have said my life was over. But I had some people come into my life because I say it, it, it took a dose to, to, to get me to, to, to mess me up, so to speak. And it's going to take adults to really put me in a place that I can be successful. So there's nothing more important than a caring adult to speak life into a child, to water his soul, to change the trajectory of his life. And I, I'm, I'm the recipient of caring adults who put something in me to be the person who I'm today. So every day I get an opportunity to pay it forward. Mm. It's so good. I'm so glad that you chose education as well. Um, because you had such an impact through educators and, and, and it wasn't just ed- educators, like you're saying, it's caring adults as well. But then by you now putting yourself in this profession of teaching, um, your impact, your, your, your potential to have such a profound impact on so many lives is there every single day. So thank you so much for choosing to be a teacher um, because you can have such a massive impact on all of these amazing lives um, of the boys in prison, which yes. um, if, if, if they don't uh, deserve somebody like you, then nobody deserves mm. somebody like you to come in and, and, and impact them. I, I think, I think so a, we want um, – the on. whole point of this podcast is about uh, enticing people to the profession, uh, all, of the, all of those – amazing experiences that we get to have with kids. So we talk about magical moments on this show. So do you have um, some particular standout magical moments with um, students along the way that you've taught either at your previous school or at your current school? You've mm. just shared, obviously, um, those graduating students would, would mean would mean everything. So is there some other magical moments that you could oh, share with us? I, I, I have this one moment. This is the, I've been in education since 95. And, but I always share this one magical moment that this young man is it, it's, it's absolutely exceptional. This young man, Nate, his name is Rodney Walker. Uh, when I first met him, uh, he was homeless. Uh, he was in DCFS. That's children that's, that the state takes care of them. Uh, he, was in 50, he was in 10 different foster placements. Uh, I uh, created a, a mentoring program. That it was a three-month intense program when I was uh, the uh, the dean of students at uh, Ace Tech Charter High School in Inglewood. It's a part of Chicago that's really dangerous. So when I met him, I noticed that he would come to school with bags. I'm like, why is this kid coming to school with bags? Like literally garbage bags. It was it was his clothes. This kid was homeless. So so anyway, he he, came, he got into the program that I created, and I'm really big on trauma-informed education, social emotional learning. That before you can put a book in front of a kid, we have to deal with the whole child. Uh, and that, when you can deal with the whole child, you can create, you can help them become their best self. So with that program, he finished the program. He was able to purge all the pain, the hurt. Uh, and it really came as a result of really uh, the number one influence of another child. There's another child. So I was able to put them in an environment where they were able to really help one another. Uh, Rodney completed the process. And he was labeled special ed his freshman year, right? His senior year in high school, he had straight A's after finishing the program. He, th- this is going to blow your mind. You know, put your seatbelts on, guys. This is, this is pretty good, okay? Because I'm excited. I'm fired up. Rodney Walker went to Morehouse College. He on probation. Uh, Morehouse College in the States here is a prominent 
uh, uh, all boys uh, college for uh, African it's known as a historically black school for African American young men. He got in on ac- pro- academic probation and did extremely well. Uh, then he had the audacity. You guys heard about Yale in, in the states here. Yale, mm-hmm. it's a mm-hmm. it's a very prominent uh, uh, Ivy League school. Quite well known. Okay, yes. so he applied, mm-hmm. guys. This kid is from Inglewood. He had a one point two. Family is both his parents are drug uh, uh, dealing with drug addiction. This kid lived in, in, in he was living in a shelter. He applied to Yale. He got into Yale. Yeah. He graduated from Yale with two degrees, two <laughs> divinity. <laughs> And international business. But the story is not over yet. It gets better. <laughs> Put your seatbelts on. He applied for Harvard. He applied to Harvard. Guess what? He got in. <laughs> he finished. It gets better. It's not over. It gets better. I'm we're on a roller coaster ride. It's, it's still going up. Guys. <laughs> Rodney Walker, he graduated from Morehouse, graduated from Yale, graduated from uh, uh, Harvard. Uh, with his degree in education. Wonder where he gets that from. <laughs> so after that, he wrote a best selling book called A New Day One. Guess who he wrote about? He wrote about his mentor, oh, Mike LeBron. Oh. Absolutely. But it gets better. I'm still not done. So Rodney Walker, he done all of these great things. Uh he got an opportunity to be in a documentary called 109A. 109A, which is a documentary for uh, for young people that are entrepreneurs. He came in second place out of 27,000 students. Hmm. So from there, you know, he did wrote a best-selling book, Bill and Melinda Gates. They got a few couple bucks. They paid for him to go all over the country to share his story. And that's how I really became internationally known because he was sharing, saying how I impacted his life. So several years ago, right, he got married. Guess who was his best man? Oh my god! Oh, so, uh, and I'm getting married too. So, guess who my co-best man is? Rodney. <laughs> so, I wanted to share that story. Yeah. So, to let educators know, uh, and Rodney has two children, and I'm their godfather. So, oh, you know, for, any, for anybody who gets into education, know that you're not only impacting uh, your students' lives; you're actually impacting the lives of their uh, children. And so, because of what you know, we he went through and and the program and changing life. His children now have a life that he don't they don't have to struggle. So it's just beautiful. So uh, education to me is just about it. I can sleep at night knowing that I'm doing the right thing. Yeah, I reckon so. Absolutely. And um, Principal McGrone, we had a listener um, email in at the end of last term that left me in tears. It was a long term, and I, I was in an emotional state as it was. But um, it. And they had said that there was lots of people, um, they're about to finish their degree and to become a teacher. And it's been a, a long, a long struggle for them to be able to get to this um, point. And so in the next two years, they will graduate and become, become a teacher. And they were saying that the haters out there, they're constantly hearing, um, you know, teaching you know, isn't a good profession. And, and one of the things that they've been saying is oh, it'll, it'll take over every, all parts of your life. And they're they're kind of promoting that as it's a bad thing, and you know you'll 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 be thinking about teaching always, and we didn't talk about this in our last episode, um, Whitey. But I guess I you can look at that in a positive lens, yeah, or you true. can look at it as in a negative lens. It depends. It depends on on what is your moral purpose yeah. for becoming a teacher. Right. I I think about my kids. Um, at school, I've got a child, but I think, and I think about him all the time, but I also think about my other students. Mm. I do think about them on the weekends and at night time. And, um, and I'm okay with that I, because that's, they, this is, this is not just a yep. job for me. This is, this is, I'm in this to try to impact their life and I want to be thinking about them. And I want, I want my, I want my son's teachers thinking about him beyond the 70 minute yeah, class yeah, as yeah. well. So it's 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 not it's not a nine to five job, and that's good. And that's good. Like that's 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 yeah. it's a beautiful thing that it's not so, a nine to five job. So I was I want to say this to people who say that because be careful who tells you that because of their own experiences. Teaching is is a lifestyle. Teaching is a ministry. Um, so I don't think about it as like a not like a job because this is mm. just it's a lifestyle. It's like I like to. It's a know. calling. It's a calling it's is a what calling. it is. It's not a job. It's a calling. It's a calling. So, yeah, 
I go home and I'll talk to my fiance about it and, you know, and I'll talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly. It's just, it, it's part of who I am. You know, it's just part of it. So I don't think about it as a job. I think about it, I just have to get paid to do something that I love. So I would say for people that's like that, maybe maybe it just may not be for you. That's okay. Yeah. That's okay. But other people, uh, most teachers that I know that, that are in this, it's personal. It's personal. Uh, are you going to have some tough days? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Let's, let's keep it real. You're going to have some tough days, but I can tell you this, your, your, your good days are going to outweigh your tough days. Mm-hmm. And then when you go to sleep at night, you knowing that you have done something to impact the child's life and that child just tell you, thank you. Yeah. And they come yeah. back and they tell you because of you, you know, I've done this or I've done that, or you, you've been able to help me deal with that. So, uh, for all the educators out there, I just want to encourage you to know that you're doing the right thing and that because of you, uh, the world is a better place because we are responsible for every doctor, every uh, uh, engineer, you know, every scientist is because of you. So I know it's going to have some tough babe, but Principal McGrone in Chicago, Illinois, wants to tell you we need you and it's going to get tough. And when we have those tough days, we're going to do like my, my, my Australian brothers like Chaz and, and White, and they're going to tell you and they're going to have you and share your story. So it's people like them that make this world better and they give us a voice. So thank you. I love it. That's exactly what we're doing. The crowd loves it. The crowd loves you, Principal McGrone. The crowd loves it. Um, And I I love that you love love what you said just then. It's where where this this podcast where we are focusing more on the good um, than than the ugly because we know jobs. This job is not easy, and that's okay. Um, because the best things in mm. life don't come easy, and like you've just said, your life hasn't been easy. But look yeah. at um, look at look at the the and beauty the that comes out of that, yeah. out of the struggle, yeah. the good, exactly. Um, so we also though we talk about the fact that a teaching job, uh, it's you have those spectacular moments of 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 life changing impact, and then you get to be working with kids, and you just get the wacky <laughs> the crazy. as well. You get the you get. <laughs> You get the crazy. You get you get to have conversations with kids and experiences um, that other professions don't just don't get to have. So, do you have a teaching tale that you can um, that you can talk to our listeners about? Oh my God! I, I was a principal at elementary school. One one of the things I want to tell educators too: if you ever having a bad day and you have an opportunity, your elementary you work in elementary school, you know. Um, Talk to a student. I mean, talk, talk, and especially elementary school, because when you deal with those, they're so innocent, and everything that they say is so important to them. So here's my story. I'm in my office, right, and this is kid named Johnny, and uh, I, I, you know, I want kids to know what it is because you know, in leadership, you see African Americans, people in leadership. So I let Johnny sit at my desk, and I said, Johnny, I said, uh, what's really important to you right now? And he said. Mr. McGraw, what did you have for breakfast? I said, uh, I, 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 I like cereal. He said, really? Wow. I like Cinnamon Toast Crunch. So for literally 30 minutes, <laughs> I'm a 45-year-old man talking to a five-year-old kid, and he's so serious, and he says, Cinnamon Toast Crunch, and he told me how to eat cereal. So he says to me, Mr. McGraw, when you eat cereal, you have to hurry up and eat it. Because like, because I like, I like the chocolatey, the really chocolatey kind. Because when you finish eating it, guess what? You get an opportunity to drink the milk, and guess what? It's chocolate too. <laughs> <And> I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, what? It's one o'clock, and I'm talking to a five-year-old kid about some dang old cereal. <laughs> So I have 90, 95 <laughs> other things that I need to be doing right now, but actually I need to be here having this conversation about oh, no. cereal with Seriously. this person. It's passion. And I, to this day, he's a, he's, a, he's a senior in high school, and, I, and I'm like, if, this, once I, if I ever see him again, I'm like, dude, <laughs> talk about cereal, man. <laughs> you, don't, you don't pay any bills. You don't have a car note. You don't pay a phone bill. Your your issue is serial. What a life! Yeah. Oh, it's, it's good to be. It's good to be Absolutely passionate glorious. about something, though. You know, you, if you can be, you know, for a yes. kid that hates it, cereal. Yeah, absolutely. Cereal. <laughs> yeah. 
love it. That's great. Um, we I, at my school, um, Principal McGrone, we have a we have grade four students, so we've got kind of grade we've got seven year olds up to fifteen year olds, so grade grade four to grade ten. Yes. And we we wear a sash when it's our birthday that says it's Ooh. my birthday. Ooh. The teachers have to do that, which is great. Um, and then the kids love it and get go get excited for you. I had um, talking about the the innocent um, conversations you get to have with a seven year old, and I was wearing the sash, and he came, oh, "Happy birthday, Mrs. Angel! Oh, thank you so much." Uh, and and he said, um, "How old are you?" And um, and I said, oh, and then I said the thing that you should never say to a seven-year-old. Um, he, I said, how old do you think I am? Oh, and he goes, God. yeah, oh my gosh, wait for your soul to be destroyed. And he goes, well, hmm, my mum, she's, uh, she's 37. Oh. So, and he looks, he looks at me, gives me a good up and down. And he's like, so you, I think you must be. 82. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> oh, you're close, mate. You're so close. All right. You have a good day. <laughs> this rig is big. <laughs> <laughs> but he, there was, he thought so long and hard about it. He, like, he really, I was thinking, wow, he's, he would usually have previously just blurted out a number, had that moment of pride. He's really, really thinking right now. Oh, good you for you, Jackson. Tears. Yeah, so it wasn't, it wasn't just a flippant, flippant <laughs> yeah. estimate. It was a well-considered evidence. No, no, no. He did, he did, he did the math. He calculated every one of these wrinkles, and he yeah. decided 80, 82 is the age of this Spectacular. old lady. Spectacular. very thoughtful. Ouch. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Oh, man. I used yep. to look young bef before I became a teacher, but that's okay. I'm willing. I'm, I'm willing to pay in wrinkles for it's, the lives that I'm changing from smiling every day. All the time. That's oh, what they man. are. They love exactly. the Exactly. Exactly. Right. Don't you love them? Don't exactly. Love them. <laughs> Absolutely. They're love beautiful. It. Love it. Um, all right. I um I would like to invite you, Principal McGrone, to play a, a little game against uh against Mr. White. It's called the Alphabet Game. Are you willing to take on the challenge? Oh my goodness. I think I'm ready. Do you, you can stretch while I play the sting, okay? This is high stakes stuff. Play a free game. Thanks, Monty. Excellent. Here we go. I'll remind you um, that when we play the alphabet game, um, the odds are forever stacked in our um, in our inspiring guests' favour. And we um, ask you to name something. I will name something in a category, and then I will give you a letter, and then you just need to call out a an answer that corresponds with that letter. All right. Here we go. I'm nervous. Here we go. I need a W. Oh, you should be. <laughs> you have me sweating over here. <laughs> excellent, excellent. All right, let's go with um, name a name a name something that a teacher might eat during the day, starting with N. Nuts. They just eat nuts. Like, yes, I, I eat those during the day to stay healthy. Of course. I'm like, I love my nuts, yeah. Of course. Nuts, perfect. Beautiful. I would have also oh, taken have nothing, uh, um, <laughs> which is often, often what um, what a teacher might eat during right. the day. But nuts, uh, um, that would be all of their dreams coming true. And it's a good little um, on-the-go snack as well. Yeah, so look, thank you. Yeah. Further, yeah. further moments of, um, of, of brilliance from Principal McGrone. Uh, one, awesome. one nil, All right. one nil. Here we go. Another one. One nil. One nil. It is best of three. So you could win it here. Um, let's go with name um, an American state starting Michigan. with M. Massachusetts. Mr. White. I don't know. Is Mich Michigan isn't a, is it a state? Yeah, Michigan. Okay, cool. No, yeah, don't um, get. Uh, yeah, wait. Um, cool. <laughs> Geography teacher. Excellent. Woo. <laughs> No, that's right. He's good. All right. Like it's one yeah, all. <laughs> Tiebreaker. Uh oh. Tiebreaker. Are we ready? Yes. Excellent. Name a an Indiana sporting team starting with I. Indiana Pacers? 
That'll be it. I did start with India because I knew that Mr. White would say Indiana and he would have made something up. So the paces, there we go. Um, we have another win. Protest, protest, protest. <laughs> nope. No, 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 no. There's no right of reply. There is just another win oh, there for our amazing guest. So well done, Principal me. McGrone. Well done. Uh, well done. Nailed it. Um, good, it's a good win and uh, it was it was a tense. If, now I'm Most sweating. Tense. Um, so good sportsmanship, Mike. Right. Good sportsmanship. Yeah, thank thank you. Thanks, it. Principal. Yes. Thank, thank you. you. He is a very I'm, I'm good very loser. Used to it. Um, a lot of experience. I, I have conditioned I conditioned him to losing quite well on this show. Um, all right. So, Mr. Um, Principal McGrone, can you? Is there something, some way that our listeners can connect with you? Uh, can you give us the name of your book again? I'm sure lots of people would love to purchase that and read more yes. of your stories uh, and and of your leadership. Yeah, the name of my book is called "The Twist and Turns of Possibility." My life is my true story, and you can go to Amazon. You can, it's everywhere. You can just uh, search. You can put in my name, or just so again, it's the uh, it's, uh, the twist and turns of possibility. My life is my true story. Um, my website is www.mcgrownprinciple. That's a uh, principal uh, with a L E, not A L. It's P R I N P. I'm sorry, e, uh, P R I N C I P L E dot com. So principal uh, McGrone, M C G R O N E, principal dot com. And so you'll find out. Beautiful. If, uh, I do a consulting all over. I'll be in New York soon doing some work, uh, helping. I'm a turnaround school, so I do assessments. You know, look at the school and find out uh, uh, their routines and procedures. Uh, uh, I do a study where you know individuals have found out their A scores and uh, create infrastructure to support those students that need the most support. Um, I also believe that you can only work to know a school. You have to know the community because mm -hmm. if you don't know the community, it'll dictate the coach inside your school. And so uh, that's one way to get in contact with me. Uh, uh, and also uh, Facebook. Just go to my Facebook, uh, Michael McGrone. Uh, and you'll see a lot of the work that I'll do, uh, real work that's uh, documented and a lot of the work. So just Michael McGrone and just search me on uh, Facebook. So I would love to have some more of my Australia family reach out and, Whatever you need, give me a call. I would love to provide some support. Awesome. It has been um, an absolute delight getting to know you, Principal McGrown, and we uh, we need you out here in Australia. Yes. I think that we need to bring you out for a conference and, and connect with some of the teachers in Australia as well. So let's, let's see if it. we can make that happen um, as well. I'm assuming willing to travel. Absolutely. I would love to, uh, I would love to go out there and however you guys want to – I would love to share my experiences uh, because hurt is hurt, pain is pain, uh, and my specialty is really dealing with schools and creating infrastructure to support that that's built around children that come to school that uh, may be dealing with some challenges at home and also developing infrastructure to deal uh, uh, to help support parents. Uh, so that's my that's my calling, uh, that's my specialty, and that's what I take pride in building schools. To support the well, the uh, the wellness of our children and parents, so they can become their best self. That's my that's my special. Love it. Absolutely love it. Mm -hmm. uh, for any of our listeners uh, who would like to connect with us, so obviously we've heard today, principal, some of Principal McGrone's magical moments and teaching tales. We want to share those uh, stories with the rest of the world. So if you have heard Mr. McGrone's story today and want to also know that you have a story to share, please connect with us on Teachers Change Lives podcast at gmail.com or you can find us on Instagram and Facebook to uh, send us a message and send us a little video of your teaching tales and magical moments. And uh, where else can they find us, uh, Mr. White? The TikTok. Did you say the TikTok? The the TikTok, I didn't say the TikTok, uh, also can find some of those stories um, on, on the TikTok as well, particularly those magical moments, the wisecracks and yeah, the send in, please. tales. So connect with us. Please share with your friends. We want to connect with – There is. did you know, Principal McGrone, there is 80 million teachers worldwide? Whoa. Beautiful. 80, 80 million. million. We need so each other. we're trying to connect with – Yeah. We do yeah, need we each do. other. Exactly each right. Other. Yeah. So please – Tag in friends, share with friends, get people on board. This is a little weekly dose of happiness um, celebrating the yep. best profession in the world. Um, so 
with all of that, thank you so much again, Principal McGrain. Keep thank up you, your man. Keep doing God's what you're work. doing, man. It's yeah. great. Really thank you guys is. for inviting me. You guys are the bum. Chicago sends you love. So whenever you guys want to uh, come for me, so we major love, major love, major love. <laughs> Chicago loves Australia. Beautiful. Thank you yeah. Thanks, Principal McGrain. So good. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Well, Cheers. see you later, Mr. White. Keep up the see great later, work. And see you later, Principal McGrain. See you, everyone. See you. Bye. <laughs> Powered by Riverside.